Hi, everybody. Welcome. Hey. Hey. Welcome to the Dark Tower Countdown. So I'm Joseph Goodman, and these guys are, I'll let you introduce yourselves. Uh, hey, Chris Doyle, uh, director of 5e development for Goodman Games, and uh, the person who handled the 5e conversion of the Dark Tower. And I'm Bob Brigman. I work on the DCC side of things at Goodman Games. I did the DCC conversion for Dark Tower. And you might hear Vance in the background. That, 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 that's the cat. <laughs> the cat. Oh, I wasn't sure what kind of animal it was. Okay. Yes, yeah, we, we, well, we, 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 we uh, got him and named him during uh, <laughs> during the Dying Earth project. So <laughs> so what kind of cat do you, if you get another one, is it going to be based on something Dark Tower? I, I don't know. Almost all the cats we've had, they've all been either authors or musicians. So, I mean, we've had Asimov, Lovecraft, uh, Harlan for Ellison because he's small and bitey, uh, Vance, we've got, we've had, well, we currently have Etta. Yeah, they're, they're all writers and musicians. So I'm guessing the next two names on the list are going to be Stro and Curtis. Uh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Well, welcome everybody. We're here for the next hour, or I guess 59 minutes now, to uh, count down the final hour of the Dark Tower Kickstarter. Um, it's been going now for, I guess, just under a month, and it's been amazing. This is the most backed Kickstarter that Human Games has done, which I think is a great testament to how many people love this adventure and remember it all the way back from 1979. Um, and of course, all the interest these days in DCC and 5e, which are the two systems we're converting it to. Um, and it's been just kind of amazing. So we're just going to talk about the project, talk about what we've done so far, um, new content, add-ons, stretch goals, all that kind of stuff. Um, that's my agenda. Chris and Bob, you guys got anything else that I forgot to mention? My agenda is we're less than $4,000 from the next stretch goal. So we have yeah. 57 <laughs> minutes to do that. We can do it. Come on, let's get that. Let's get that last stretch goal. So we got it. Yeah, it's like that, a PBS pledge a thon. Exactly. Know, we'll, have, we'll send you a little canvas tote, you know. <laughs> no, <laughs> even better. If you if, if you pledge right now, we will send you books. <laughs> yeah. Not right now, though. We won't send no, you books no, right no, now. But soon. You pledge now, books come soon. Yeah. Yes. No, that's good. Yeah. Now, Chris, you just got back from Origins, right? I did indeed. Origins was last week, last Thursday through Sunday. Um, and uh, it was my first in-person convention in over two and a half years, so it was oh. fun and apprehensive at the same time, <laughs> um, and uncomfortable, uncomfortable in the sense of having to wear a mask for that long. Yeah. Um, when I sit and work in my home office, I don't have to wear a mask. Uh, I, my, yeah. my mask wearing is about limited to like less than an hour to the grocery store usually, so uh, so this was definitely different, um, but it was great. It was, uh, you know, the best part of it was being able to reconnect with the fans um and i mean that part was awesome we we pretty much we sold out of all the ore books that we had uh which was That's awesome. amazing yeah which was which was was great i met so many people it was it was funny i was telling joe earlier uh when people would walk up to the booth and they knew us it, I, I, we have one of two responses either oh i backed the kickstarter within the first four hours of the first day or whatever or, oh, whoa, you're doing a Kickstarter? Let me check that out. And of course, we had the QR code there for them to scan. Um, so anybody, if you guys are in the chat, if anybody actually found the Kickstarter at Origins or you decided at Origins after talking to us to, uh, to back it, uh, throw us some love in the, in the chat and we'll make sure that we uh, single you out to everybody here <laughs> um, and make sure we embarrass you. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, no, it was great. Uh, Brendan was running games um, over in, uh, in another room. Um, it was cool just to walk up and down the halls, the dealer's hall and just see all the other companies yeah. uh, that were there um, and to go back to Columbus, it had been um, 19 years since I had been um, at Columbus at Origins. Actually, awesome story. That's where I met you, Joe. The last right. time I was at yes. Origins was when I met you. It was like about a month after my kid was born um, in June of 2003. Uh, so it was 19 years ago. So it was cool. Uh, Columbus has changed a little bit, but not as much. Um, but Columbus <laughs> seems like it's doing great. It's Columbus is a great, great city. Um, for those of you who have not been to Origins, it's a nice, it's a big con, but it doesn't feel like a big con. It's not yeah. as busy and crowded as Gen Con is, but you get an awesome dealer's room and there's a lot going on. So um, you can really focus on, on playing some games at Origins. So um, that's, that, that, that's the best part of it. So yeah, I had a blast 
talked to a lot of lot of folks and 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 also you know rubbed elbows with my my fellow Goodman Games peeps as well, which was awesome. So um, that's had a good. Great time. The last time I was at Origins, it was in Milwaukee. Wow, with, Wait, running concurrently wow. with Gen when was Con. that eighty eight? That was that was eighty eight. That was eighty eight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my goodness! Wow. So wow. you got it. All right, you got to put that on your list. Bob next year. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta go to Origins. Thousand dollars. If we make the next stretch goal, Bob will go to Origins next year on his own dime. You heard it here. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Here's a Chris. How else did you think that was gonna work? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's funny, Chris. In my head, you go to Origins every year. I think I associate you with Origins yeah. probably because we met there. So. I think of you as like, oh, Chris, he goes to Origins all the time. But I, yeah. I guess it's once every 19 years. No, or I guess twice every 19 three, years. Yeah, when, when Gen Con was in its last few years in Milwaukee, I transitioned over and started going to Origins because it was drivable and my, my, my gang was yeah. driving out there. And then um, and we went back to Gen Con for the last one in Milwaukee. When it was the last one in Milwaukee, we were like, oh, we're definitely going. And we skipped the first one in Indy. So, yeah. And then I bought a house in there and it was like, you know, and had a kid and he was really young. And so it was it was a tricky time in that regard. But yeah, so it was it was good. I would like to I would like to definitely do it, although I don't think I'm going to be able to make Origins next year for another big life thing going on. So, but oh, anyway. I see. So I'm going to end up going and you're going to bail. Is that what it is? It, it, dude, it's my 30th wedding anniversary. So, um, bail, and, dude, and, bail. I understand. <laughs> are you ready for this? I think we, booked, it, we booked a <laughs> hobbit hole in Virginia and we booked it a year and a half ago and they still have another year to go to get. So it was two and a half years we had to book it in advance. So I'm probably going to miss Origins for that one, unless Origins changed changes their dates away from my my uh <laughs> anniversary so the nerve of them yes. my goodness so yeah. wow um later on you have to tell me about the hobbit hole in virginia <laughs> that I sounds will. like a gamer worthy vacation but it that's does, not really our, having to go our main to topic Zealand. today so. <laughs> okay well i will say <laughs> on on dark tower sort of sort of um janelle was telling me one of she actually won one of the gen con tournaments it like gen con 76 or 77 or something like that she was mm -hmm. did one of the and you know all those tournaments basically became eventually published tsr modules mm -hmm. um i need to get that story from her uh because it's funny how much of this history that we associate with cons and origins and gen con and the tournaments we run you know who knows who come who's coming out of these tournaments who might someday design some future adventure that's really important but janelle actually used to play in all those gen con tournaments and was in the winning team in one of them which is pretty cool nice Played in the AD and D Open once. It did not end well for our table. Uh -oh. When you think when you a, think something's a portal and it's actually a sphere of annihilation, and your party one by one touch, touches it to be teleported away, <laughs> does not you do not advance to the second round. Yeah, bummer. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Well, so uh, let's see. So Dark Tower was first published in '79. So if Janelle was playing in a and, uh, and she started with Judges Guild, I think she said in 78. So if she was playing in a Gen Con tournament, it was probably 76, 77, 78, something like that. Uh, but it's kind of amazing. Actually, it says it right here over my shoulder. The classic adventure lives again. It's kind of amazing that this adventure is coming back and, you know, coming back to life for 5e and for DCC, which is awesome. One of the things we did that actually, Chris, you really helped with this was taking some of the ideas of the original adventure and expanding them. Can you, and, you know, guys, if you back to Kickstarter, you might have heard this already, but for those who didn't or on the fence or watching this and not sure let's tell you about the chosen sons of set which is some of the the cool stuff that we expanded on from the original um maybe chris tell them a little bit about about, sure. about all that so um in, in the original dark tower module um set is a pretty big deal he's your big bad guy um battling uh, mitra um and he has what's called the sons of set and the sons of set are these demons that are um, a bunch of random tables. If you if you follow the Kickstarter, you, we actually created one. The backers actually helped us create one that we're going to add in. We'll talk about that later. Um, but there's all these random tables that you can design to come up with a uh, lesser or a chosen son of set. Um, there's only four chosen sons of set. There's probably hundreds of lesser sons of set. And one of the chosen sons is in the Dark Tower module. So when I was deep into the weeds of actually converting this, um, you know, Joe and I, we talked and he was like, hey, you know, since, since we own this sucker, like what, what's, the, what's the next logical thing that we could do? Um, could we, you know, to, to set more things in this, in this world? As, as Michael 
called it <clears throat> the Janellaverse, I think is, is the official term. Yeah. So um, I was like, okay. I said, well, I said, there's three <clears throat> other chosen sons out there. And I'm like, we should probably do something with that. And then, and then Joe was like, hey, three extra modules sounds good. And I was like, oh, wow, that's easy <laughs> math. One module, extra sun. So, so we actually um, commissioned three brand new adventures set in the theme and the appropriate adventure, the levels appropriate to Dark Tower. Um, and, uh, and uh, you know, all the authors that we reached out to to commission um, were familiar with the original book that most of them had actually played the original book or at least owned it and read it. Um, so when I when I approached them about the project and said Dark Tower, they were like, whoa, I could do something in Dark Tower. They were so excited about that. And if you guys know me, it's like that's that's what I'm looking for with my writers. I'm looking for that passion um, of, of people who are invested um, in the project. And, and I found three awesome folks that were really, really invested. And um, so I gave them a little tiny bit of direction. We we, we discussed with Janelle about tweaking the backstory of the Sons of Set ever so slightly um, so we could pull off kind of like a cool additional story arc. So after you finish going through the whole Dark Tower module, if you get through the whole thing, all the levels and the towers, um, there's three brand new modules that will keep you busy. And, and it was cool. We set these modules in the region around it. So you have to travel to them. You know, all right, you're high level at this point. You probably got teleport and stuff like that. So it's probably not that big of a deal. Yeah. But you know, you get to see the sites. It's kind of like a whirlwind tour of the whole region. We call it the Lost Lands. Um, so, uh, so you'll get a chance to actually continue your adventures if you want. And that's the third book in the series. So uh, we're really excited about this. This, this came, you know, it, it was funny how these things evolve. At first, we we're like, well, let's do a couple of additional modules. Then we we're like, well, let's do three. And then, and then we're like, well, let's just put it in the Kickstarter and just make it bigger and better. And like, why even bother beating around the bush and everything let's just let's just make it as awesome as we can right out the gate and and that's what we did so hopefully everybody really appreciates that and of course on the dcc side you're you're higher level so you'll probably own horses and <laughs> so it's, it's more of, it's more of like the indiana jones like travel log right across the map yes. lots of dots but the adventures coming coming from the dcc side you so so many people go back and forth about you know why they like one game or the other but the design aesthetic of these adventures so fits the dcc ethos um heart charts of of Cafet, for example by uh, james floyd kelly oh my god it is it is an amazing adventure and it just reading it i was like well obviously this was misstated because this was written for dcc this is very obviously a dcc <laughs> and then i read the next one I'm like well this is very obviously a dcc adventure yeah they, and all yeah. all three of them are so well written they're so different and i know you've talked about you know they're not all just dungeon crawls one's a city crawl one's yep. you know one's kind of a hex crawl but they're they've all got that weird vibe to them that really makes them a lot of fun on the dcc side of things yeah that's what we that's what we really went for i mean we really we really i i, I didn't want just three more dungeon mm. adventures because you got four levels of that and and you got so much of that in the original book so i definitely wanted to mix it up we, we wanted to do one dungeon crawl in there and that's why i kind of came up with the idea i want to travel around because you know part like you said the dcc part traveling is part of the adventure and if, if this yeah. party doesn't have teleport and stuff like that for 5e you know they're gonna have to do that that hard travel as well um, but so that was kind of the thought process with that. And I remember when I gave the one to author who got stuck with the city crawl and he was like, it's like, basically he's like, I guess I'll do city. And, and you could tell, I, I could tell there was an apprehension. And then I, I met with him a couple of times afterwards and we really kind of went, we really kind of talked out how we wanted to present this. Cause you know, uh, you know, in a dungeon, dungeon walls are easy. You can tell where the characters are going to go and where they can't go in a city. They can go anywhere. So there's the temptation yeah. to over design it. Um, but there is a sweet spot there where you just design the areas that you need that are going to be most important and you kind of leave that the rest of it up to the game master and he knocked it out of the park. I mean, I, that, that city crawl is amazing. I love it. Well, because love it's, dynamic. Not, it's not just an adventure. It's a it's a mini gazetteer for the city. The city has yes. as a background. There's history to it, which really is is like the way Janelle wrote Dark Tower. There's layer upon layer of yeah. history that you don't just read, you experience it. And the city adventure is written in the same fashion. And there's there's so much more to experience there and for any judge or, or GM to build on. So it's, that was the, the last one that I finished the conversions on. And 
there was just so much to it. It was breathtaking. Yeah. So I think folks are really going to like it because even if folks are don't end up using the original Dark Tower, these are kind of modular. You could pull these all three of these out and just do them as one shots. And, you know, we'll probably yeah. end up doing that at conventions and events and stuff like that. When we when we run a, a Gen Con, I'm going to be running one of the modules actually in the main book. But, uh, you know, I just pulled that part out because it's kind of a self-contained storyline, if you will, instead of just, oh, where do you start with four dungeon levels? It's, you can't really pull off that in a, in a good four-hour session. You really need, like, I don't know, 40 or 80 hours to pull that off. The main play, <laughs> DCC playtest is still ongoing. Yeah. So, <laughs> My yeah. God, you haven't killed them yet, Bob? Pretty close. Well, now they're, they're terrified. They, uh, they had been afraid to leave, to go deeper than level two. And uh, then they got, they were treated to level one. They accidentally found a teleport that took them to level three with a stairway that went down. And they're now on level four, hoping to find their way out. <laughs> their, their entire goal changed. That's pretty funny. No, I love the way Janelle designs, which is like you said, the layers of history where there's a site, and then there's the history of the site leading up to the present and all these things that happen as a result. And then usually some sort of I, I don't know, archaeology. So so you're not just exploring a static dungeon. You're exploring the static dungeon that had a change and had another change. And this person moved in, this person moved out. They had a fight. Like, there's so much to it. Agreed. Yeah, it's really yeah. It's, it's really phenomenal. It um, adds a lot of depth to the experience of playing it and running it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, and just reading it, too. I mean, yeah. yes. just, just <laughs> yeah. reading it, you make all the connections and you're all like, wow, this is, like, fascinating, the, the layers and everything and the unexpected you know, the twist on even something as simple as that, yeah, you get the whole fully designed village in the beginning, but there, everybody's out to get you. I mean, it's not, it's not a safe haven for the PCs to go back to. I mean, I'm assuming your, your group, uh, Bob, is not going back to the village to rest up. No, so um, they, they accidentally wandered into one of the temples of set during a service and literally had the uh, sort of the reverse funnel experience of being chased by the villagers with torches and pitchforks. And, uh, <laughs> and so, yeah, they're not going back into town ever. <laughs> this point. Nice. And I think one of the fun things we were able to do in this Kickstarter was have the, the backers create their own son of set. Um, and Elena, if you get a chance, there's two sons of set, bring up the one that was the, the picture that the backers created, but, if you're a backer, you already know this, and many of you watching probably do, but you guys, I think it was four days of polls, as I recall. Five. That's uh, right. Five, five, yeah. yeah. Choosing different configurations of special abilities, um, physical manifestations, et cetera, and wound up with the uh, uh, Hydra, Phew. I'm going to, uh, sorry, say, yeah, Hydra-headed, <laughs> resistant to magic. I'm trying to remember them all. Uh, paralyzing eye beams, I think. What were yep. the other powers? Um, um, uh, teleport um he's Teleport, got, yeah yeah he's got uh two pairs uh two pairs or three pairs two pairs of oh, right. uh, humanoid arms with uh uh wielding uh hoopish swords so uh the hook is that how you say it awesome. i, I, don't I thought it was kopesh it could have been i don't know i'm from new jersey i call it hoopish so <laughs> you know it's it depends you know tomato tomato so, aren't you the one who says dro dro versus drow i say drow so oh, I see, but, who says dro somebody no, a lot of people dro. say dro i think i think rick says so mm. yeah i know i know so <laughs> he says he says he cornered he cornered gygax in like the uh, gen con hotel once uh in the bar at the bar and asked him how to pronounce it and i was like really that's where you went it's like if you had gygax all to yourself for like you know a, a couple of questions that's where you went i'm like oh my god <laughs> gary explained to me cyborg commando combat the the combat system for cyborg commando so uh, it's believable but that's uh, that, that sounds much more legitimate than asking how to pronounce drow or drow dude that sounds great i would i would have asked him about uh uh don't give up the ship is what i would have asked him about D -guts. i mean that's where i would have went i mean or bronze stone or whatever any of the, any of those back in the 50s and 60s or something i would not have gone with the pronunciation of the dark skin elves i'm just saying i'm just saying <laughs> With me. Anyway, how did we? What were we talking about? <laughs> we were talking about the yeah, absolute know. beast of a son of Seth yes. that the backers created. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty Bob sure the people backers. that built this thing were the judges, because players would not have built something this tough that they would have to Good go boy. up against. <laughs> oh no way! No way! 
So yes, <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna actually we're gonna put that in there, and the artwork is gonna go in somewhere. One of the books, we'll yeah. cram it in one of the books. We'll try and make them all kind of even in size. <laughs> yeah, and you guys, we can stat this. It's just really cool that the way the backers created this. We had I think over four hundred people vote uh, for most of the polls, but yeah, we'll stat this sucker up for DCC and Five D. And Brad, he said there's some additional finishing he wants to do in the art. He was kind of cranking that out quickly um, to get it done for the Kickstarter. But and uh, it's just really cool to, I don't know, have this sort of versatility of what you can do with Sons of Set also illustrated. And the fact that you can have 400 people kind of create out create it, which is pretty cool. And now, actually, before I go on to the next topic, we're 20 minutes in. So we have 40 minutes left. Or I guess the Kickstarter says 39 minutes left. And if you're watching this, if you get a chance, think about adding a little bit more, telling your friends to pledge, stuff like that. Because we're hoping to clear 450 which is our 5D adventure stretch goal uh, by the end of the show, 38 minutes from now. Yeah. Come on, DCC people, dig deep. The 5E people got you an adventure. You can help them get the same. Totally fair. <coughs> well said, Bob. So then the other chosen son of the set, or I guess son of set, I should say, that we had uh, the Kickstarter is the one that Janelle designed, which is really cool. She was actually following along the project progress. And as Chris mentioned, he had shared some of the ideas and some of the manuscripts with her. And she had a brainstorm, which is what led her to create hers. And Elena, if you can show that image now. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff about this creation of hers. The part that I like was that it wears the um, like banded straps of armor that have relics of uh, saints of Mitra that it has slain and corrupted. And then it can sort of tap into these relics to uh, use the like trapped corrupted souls of the saints of Mitra, which is pretty cool. Yeah. No, very, very cool. A gargantuan, two-legged, only two legs, so it kind of has to kind of crawl <laughs> around. It's, a, it's not, it's yeah. definitely not mobile. Uh, a hydra with a single, uh, a single um, eye, kind of like a cyclops. And like you said, it's got all those uh, armor bits and everything from the lions of Mitra that it is defeated and corrupted. Um, interestingly, it cannot summon um, minions of set, and instead it can summon these corrupted saints, basically, and they fight for them. So that is going to be a really fun one um, to actually fully stat out and and add that. So yeah, it's just it's great. So it's given all these awesome additional tools for uh, game masters to expand uh, already the immense amount of material that's in this the, this book. So this is going to keep people busy for a very, very long time. Well, and it has now, a great is, piece of yeah. background, too, that it yeah. might have been one of the original chosen sons yep. for being defeated and losing that status. Yes. And, and so that really gives uh, the judge something to sink their teeth into. And also means that, you know, oh, my players also backed Dark Tower and they think they're going to run into this chosen son of set. Well, I'll just swap this one in instead and, uh, and elevate them up back to chosen son status and go. Yeah, it'll yes. be brutal. Awesome. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, and so, guys, why don't we recap some of the stretch goals that we cleared so far as we urge people to get to the new stretch goals. I, uh, I need to check my notes here because there's been so many. It's hard to keep track of them all. Let's see. Wow, it's so long ago at 50,000. That was the sewn-in satin ribbon bookmarks. I actually, these are, this is, again, me geeking out on printing technology. But, you know, the printers can actually sew a bunch of these in. And in my experience, like with the latest printing of the core rulebook, we actually have three of these sewn in the different colors. And it makes it really easy to mark, oh, you know, I'm making this up, but I was looking at, you know, these, these tables that I need to reference. And then this spell was in the middle of being used and this other thing. So especially with this many book, you know, books, I mean, there's three books. So clearly there's going to be at least three bookmarks. We might even go with more than that if it, it's helpful. Cause I think people are going to need to keep track of several things as they go through all these things. Agreed. Yeah. Those are really handy. Yeah. And then foil printing on the slip cases, which is just something I love. That was at 75. Um, oh, the sunken temple of set. Actually, Chris, somebody just complimented you in the chat a couple minutes ago about that. I but, saw uh, that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, it, yeah, it amazes me how many people really, really love. I mean, if you guys like sunken temple of set, that that is what you're getting in this, but you're just getting a lot more of it. <laughs> so just imagine, like, I don't know, a hundred times more the amount of that material. But uh, the the sunken temple of set originally, I was gonna have that as be like a little mini dungeon off to the side. Um, cause when I was going through my design, I kind of came up with the idea and everything. And then, uh, last, late last year when we decided we were going to do a free RPG day release and we we're like, Oh, Hey, we've got this Kickstarter coming out. Do you have something? And I was like, Oh, I have exactly something for you. It's already mapped out and everything. 
Um, so yeah, so we just put that out as as uh, an additional uh, book at Free RPG Day uh, last year. So we're gonna put that in the third um, uh, the third book, the Chosen Sons of Set book, and we're also converting it for DCC because it was never converted for DCC before. Have so, converted right. it for DCC. Yes. Well, it is now. <laughs> it is now. But like, you, but nowhere else can you get the converted DCC. Good version. reminder. You go to your game store last year and pick it up for free. So yeah. So yeah. So yeah. Good really reminder. Cool. That is cool. And then the Secrets of the Sphinx, which is a new adventure. Uh, set in the Dark Tower setting. That's being included as well. And then Mitra's Bunker, which I remember you discussing. That was Taco John's addition yes. to the adventure that should have no additions. Exactly. Yes. That's yes. exactly what that is. It's like, yeah. oh, it's so tight design. You can't do another extra level or a sub-level in there. And it's like, oh, by the way, here's my sub-level. So. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yes. And then at one, or sorry, 175, oh, the booklet of pregens, which just makes it easy, um, having those ready to go. Um, Oh, and the 200. So this was new content. I know both you guys worked on this. Um, maybe, Bob, this is where you did the, the patron write-ups, right? Maybe tell us yes. a little bit about that. Um, so, so we went in different directions. So for DCC, uh, first we have the uh, patron write-up for Mitra, the Golden Lion of Righteousness. And it's it's a full-blown patron write-up, just like said is. You know, we have all the patron results, um, patron taints for, for Mitra, which aren't always as bad as some patron taints are spellburn and then a couple new spells such as uh, the golden host which summons matraic knights who are bound to mitra's service and he will he will send them to uh, to the aid of the supplicant and also the armor of mitra this this shimmering field of light that gathers gathers more power and offers more resistance and protection the higher you go um, and then, of course, on the set side of things, you know, that is uh, you know, set, uh, set our evil chaos serpent. And uh, among his spells, there are things like skin of the serpent, uh, where, uh, you know, so someone was, was making reference to, to Conan. Skin of the serpent is not an armor spell. It is you are becoming the serpent. And one of the manifestations is literally your arms pulling into your torso, the head retreating, very, very oh, wow. Conan the Barbarian, you know, Thulsa Dune transformation, and yeah. it allows you to change into like a swarm of snakes or giant snakes, um, sometimes merely as just a way to escape, but in other times ways to really lay your foes low. And then uh, Sirocco, uh, a huge sandstorm spell, that uh, that can lead to mass devastation or just small amounts of damage. It, it's there's a lot of fun stuff with both of them, and uh, and you know maybe maybe some of the snake forms that uh, that set allows you are new to DCC like a like a giant black cobra for example or a, you know a, a giant saw scaled viper. You know some fun wow. stuff to to. Uh, well, you know, there's there there's snakes in Egypt, and and I'm that guy, so I went down that road. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds cool. Does that remind me of? Hmm. <laughs> I don't know, Chris. Who does that remind you of? <laughs> Everyone else on this project, including you. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's awesome. And then, Chris, you did for that same stretch goal. You did uh, spells and. And yep. blessings and items. Tell us about those. So the everybody ID. knows I love creating backgrounds. So I created yeah. three new backgrounds for um, your player characters. Um, we have the Dune Stalker, which is kind of like an Outlander Ranger type, but specific to um, being out in the deserts and in the wastelands and everything. So he's got a couple of interesting little perks that kind of helps him out um, in finding water. Uh, we have the busker, which is the um, a street entertainer, basically. Uh, so kind of a cross between the urchin and the entertainer. Um, but, you know, instead of performing on stages and stuff like that, just really good at performing on streets and, and good at, at packing up his stuff really quickly and getting on the run as quickly as possible. So um, we definitely have that. And then the last one we have is the cactus herder. Um, and the inspiration on that is 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 plum pull pull from my favoriteest book of all time by Dr. Seuss, uh, the Lorax. And and who's gonna speak for the cactuses? You know the cacti. Excuse me. 
um, the cacti <laughs> herder is going to speak for him. So, uh, so <laughs> someone who's who can actually, you know, they got, I got a cool little ability where they can kind of meld with a cacti um, or stand a cacti and then still get some sort of little benefit. The benefit might be just something simple, like when they wake up the following morning, all the cacti in the area have moved around them and kind of protected, kind of like a, a, a protective uh, cone around them that like if the predators came in, they would get all stuck on and stuff like that. Nothing like huge, but um, I had a lot of fun with that. I created a couple of that's pretty of, cool of of monsters. Uh, one one was definitely a big ass snake, um, because you know you can't have there's not enough gargantuan snakes in in the room. Not enough. Not, not enough. enough. So I, I went I went the spinning cobra angle because nobody expects those suckers to to spit poison. So it's like oh it's like you know oh danger noodle over there don't touch it. And, you know, next thing you know, it's spitting the venom on you. So there you go. Um, <laughs> and I got a couple of uh, other monsters. And I've got some magic items. Uh, the Dagger of Desiccation, just because it sounds really cool. I mean, it doesn't yeah. really have anything to do with it. It just sounds awesome. Dagger of Desiccation. I'm like, yeah, I got to design that. Um, I've got a, uh, uh, a, an additional a legendary item, uh, a Lion Mask of Mitra. Uh, that comes attached with one of the lions. So we've got that statted out. Uh, the potion of quenching, which is really cool. Uh, each potion of quenching has 10 sips and each sip will hydrate you fully for an entire day. So that's really useful. I could use one of those. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> that sounds yeah. Cool. You use one of those right now, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so that's really good for those long um, explorations across the desert. And then finally, we wrapped it up. One of the cool things that uh, 5e does and there's other things too. I'm just giving you guys uh, a brief, a brief introduction. Uh, there's blessings and charms uh, for those game masters out there. You know that there's a uh, charms and blessings are an alternate way that you can um, uh, reward your characters instead of magic items. Um, so I've got blessings and, and I've got a set of three blessings from Set. So Set can give them to his minions, um, and then three blessings from um, uh, from Mitra. So you've got the bad ones and you get the good ones. So. Uh, a little bit of a different way to kind of, you know, give your NPCs a little kick um, or the player characters a little bit of kick. And in charms, uh, I've got like uh, four different charms that we designed that are kind of generic and can kind of go uh, all different directions. So a um, lot of cool stuff there. It was a lot of fun actually just jumping back and forth and making crunchy bits uh, for 5e. <laughs> and little things that, you know, even if you don't use them in your Dark Tower adventure, you can certainly take some of these and use them in, in other adventures um, as you see fit. But yeah, that was a, it was a lot of fun kind of jumping back and forth and designing all those different bits. That's cool. That sounds like a lot of fun stuff between the two of you. And, and looking at the chat here, it sounds like some of the 5e players want access to some of the DC stuff that uh, Bob designed and vice versa. So I don't know <laughs> if that'll ever come to pass one for one, but it's pretty cool that we have two creator tracks that are both producing really cool material. Oh no, they're gonna make me wait. I have to write the wait, wait a minute. If I have to write the module, if we hit 450, maybe we don't want to hit 450. Hold on a second. Let me look at my schedule. <laughs> You're right. We should just jump straight to 500. So people just keep going. Let's yeah. get that screen. And uh, yes. and then we'll still make Chris write a module. Somebody play yes. 50K. So yeah. yeah I exactly. Think that, yeah. Yeah. Don't let's look let's not look let's not look at that one. Let's just let's do something else there. <laughs> All right, what do we got? So 26 minutes to go. We can do this. Honestly, we can 26 do this. 26 oh, minutes. Yeah. We got this. We got this in the bag. Yep. Um, come on, if everybody just adds some dice to their pledge, we got it. So That's a great reminder. So Impact is doing for us some really cool dice. Our uh, Dark Tower dice, so they're sort of a marbled gold effect dice with the inking on the numbers in, you know, the green of sets. So you got the Mitra gold on the, the green set. And then, Bob, you had written the insert uh, you know, that'll go in the tube. Tell us about that. You were yeah. So, about that so really it's cool. uh, it, it's funny, Chris. You're talking about you. You made <laughs> the uh, the lion mask of Mitra, and I too did a lion mask, but it is the desecrated visage of Mitra Ooh. because I went with you know I was looking at the dice. I was and I was thinking about you know painting miniatures, right? You put a nice wash on something, so it's it's this golden lion mask that is all the crevices. It's all outlined in this fetish, this fetid green ooze. And it holds the insane spirit of one of the lions of Mitra that had been captured and tortured. And so Ouch. it has this, this anguished howl as an attack and, and madness. And uh, yeah, you know, because if I can make something kind of creepy, I'm going to make something kind of creepy because. Why not? Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> 
and again, I mean, the, the dice were the dice were definitely instrumental and inspirational for uh, for the insert for that. Cool. Yeah, I just they felt like I had really too cool. many evil uh, magic items because it's so much fun <laughs> creating the bad stuff. So I felt like I had to have something for the good guys to kind of balance it out. So that's why I went good. So I'm, oh, that, that, that's so see, cool that see, you have you have the evil version and very, I very very no 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 it's not evil it's chaotic lawful not necessarily chaotic. good chaotic not necessarily no. evil we don't okay. play on your axis over here on DCC for the most part <laughs> actually so this is a bit of a side note but Chris based on your comment about interest in creating the evil stuff when I was a kid of course I collected GI Joe like we all did but I always liked the Cobra guys better was that the only one mm, I don't know I, you know I, <laughs> No, Although to be fair, my so. GI Joes were about that tall, so yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> see, see, you got to put it in terms that I can understand. So when I was a kid, I used to play with Star Wars toys all the time, and of course, all the bounty hunters were way, way cooler yes, than like the good guys. I agree. Yes. So, and the evil empire and all that. So yeah. So I mean, that's that's the now I understand it. So um, new episode tomorrow morning, by the way. So oh, that's sorry. right. Yes, <laughs> no, I know. I don't watch it at 6 a.m. like you do, but I do yes. try to keep up on my Obi Wan. 6 a.m., <laughs> man. I'm there. So everybody's awake. <laughs> no. What time does it even like? Is that uh, when it becomes available? Or is it, it like, comes, one dude, it's easier for you. It's available at midnight for you, man. It's like three yeah. hours from now it drops. And it's like, or whatever that is. <laughs> no, no, it's like six hours or something. But yeah, no, so that's 3 a.m. my time. I'm not that crazy, dude. I'm not that crazy to get up at 3 a.m. Although, <laughs> although there's been times where I've woken up around 3 a.m. and I'm like, no, I could just go down and watch that episode right now. So, <laughs> but I didn't. You so. Wake up after you use the bathroom, you like check your watch. You're like, oh, yeah. wait, I gotta go. Because I can't, until I see the episode, I can't like look at the internet or anything because I'll just ruin everything. So, yeah, all the spoilers. No, so I, I just want to say for the record that I agree with the chat. Cobra was way cooler and all those Cobra troopers. I had like a whole fleet of them and Destro too. And, nice. and, you know, Zartan and all his minions. And yeah, I, I love the Cobra side for some reason. And see, it's just more thematic with Dark Tower anyway, right? So, I mean, if we're going to talk, <laughs> if we're going to talk G.I. Joe or G.G. Joe's during Dark Tower, it has to be all about Cobra. Yes, exactly. Actually, speaking of G.G. Joe, mm -hmm. um, so Chris, we forgot to mention one thing in the Origins recap. Would you tell everybody if you happen to see any ziggurats at the booth? Oh yeah, so that was the that was the the big draw. Uh, we unveiled the the official Goodman Games ziggurat, which is, if I'm not mistaken, well, let's just put it this way: it requires a ladder to build because it's that big. Um, and you know, we should have counted how many bolts and how many um, how many wing nuts were involved. I mean, there were like three of us wing nuts putting it together. <laughs> and the wing nuts that we actually had to use to attach the thing, there's probably a hundred of those. Um, but yeah, no, um, our, our booth is amazing. Um, so many people came and took, we, they, we were like, we were literally at the booth and then we'd have to stop and then move to the side so people could take pictures of it. And then, <laughs> then we can go back to like work and everything. It was, uh, it was really cool. Um, and we have so many ideas on how we, uh, we, the reason everybody's like, why did you guys bring it to origin set up? There's a very good reason for that. That was the dry run. That was, that was 1.0 version. So we could see just how difficult this is to put together, how many people we need, et cetera, et cetera. Because when we unveil it at Gen Con, it's going to be even cooler because while we had four days to look at that thing and come up with so many cool ideas on it, we could do this, we could do this, we could do that. And I'm telling you, the ziggurat itself is really awesome, but it's the accessories that, you know, you always have to accessorize <laughs> everything, accessorize. You know, for example, you know, just to bring it full circle, accessorize your dark power campaign with dice and minis and, and campaign and coins. Whatnot. So, but same with your ziggurat. It's like adding a couple of skulls here and there just makes all the difference to it. It turns yep. it from just another, you know, pyramid like structure to just like really any old cool. pyramid to like a really yeah. cool ziggurat. <laughs> yeah, it was it was awesome. So, um, but yeah, definitely cool. So, if you guys are, if anybody out there in the chat's coming to Gen Con. Uh, that's just one of the surprises you're going to get um, at, at Gen Con. So, um, you know, well, and, and I bring this up because you're right. We needed, you know, we got to get the learning curve of the ziggurat out of the way early at Origins so that for a Gen Con, we have that down pat in order to then unveil the wizard band, which of course is the next addition to the GG Joe crew. We'll have to have the, you know, not just the file card for uh, Doombeard, which is Wayne's code name, but we need the file card now for the actual band itself. 
Because the goal nice. is to get the Wizard Band into Gen Con and run games out of the back. And some of you guys in the chat may have actually signed up for those games. But it will be awesome. I mean, it will also be tight quarters <laughs> and a smelly old band. But it will be awesome. <laughs> it'll, trust us, it'll be amazing. Did they do that with G.I. Joe? Did they actually do cards for the vehicles as well? I don't remember no, I just, vehicle cards. They had the, the drivers had a card. And I feel like they had a... Um, was it in the, the comics where they did like the technical readout? Where am I remembering this from? I think that's from the Marvel comics. Yeah. Yeah, maybe that's what I'm thinking of. I, I feel like they did that in the comics. And they had a little blueprint thing that would come with the the, the toys. Oh, yes. Um, yeah. So yeah. since we actually have a ziggurat, does that mean the ziggurat ban has been lifted? <laughs> Good point. Yeah, I guess we can write about ziggurats again. Yeah. Woo! Now, did, now everybody's going to be writing ziggurat yeah. modules. Have, have we? Fi I have to ask this. Did we finally write a module with a freaking gong in it? I mean, has that been done yet? I know we have the gong farmer almanac and all that, but like, but like, is there a module that the, that there's a gong that is like central to the plot? Because I don't understand why we don't have one of those. Asking yeah, you will receive. Right. You know, I'm writing a DCC Dark Tower adventure, right? Oh, there yeah. it is, the Gong of Doom. I mean, or whatever. So the it gong sounds like we're gonna have to work at a Gong. Yeah, the Gong yeah. of Set. That, does, that does work. If somebody else doesn't do it, I'll do it. I mean, because yeah. I mean that is like a, totally a missed opportunity. I mean, you know, it's got to be like a whole tournament designed around the Gong, in my opinion. So <laughs> throwing it out. There. I do agree. We need to, we need to somehow work that in. And, and you're right. I don't think we have actually had it, it, it. I can't think of anywhere it was like you know central. I mean, I'm sure there's Gongs in the background descriptions and stuff but i don't think it's ever been part of the plot or part of the main plot of any of them yeah you know i think I'll a directive that. i think a directive needs to come down from the top about that and be like <laughs> if there's right. anything we if there's one thing we do in 2023 it's a gong centric dibs model. dibs dibs i've already called <laughs> dibs chris stop it <laughs> you're, you're doing too much man you're already I'm, doing I'm too gonna, much for the stuff i'm we'll gonna work, i'm gonna use it in the adventure that everything. i'm writing for dark tower so Gonna run, he's gonna get gong in for everything. Hey, the go, hey, look, the gong conversation's pushing up our numbers. See oh, Neon Knights is a gong. Yeah, see? Oh, it's good reminder. Dark Tower. Yeah. So, <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be, I'll do it. I'll do it. It'll be a, it'll be a gong. There'll be a gong. The 5e see, module. This is how we do But this is how we ended up with the ziggurat band. I don't know what was in the water, but like everybody was writing ziggurats into every adventure. And one year after like the fourth adventure with a central ziggurat concept, I mean, we even had that Metamorphosis Alpha adventure. Uh, that's a cigarette and zero g and zero g yeah like wow. it's even in the title you know i was like what's up with the ziggurats guys like we need to slow down maybe next year's, and everything maybe next year's tournament should just be various trans-dimensional forms of the gong yes <laughs> the gong yes you, 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 you hit the gong and you travel across the multiverse and you go, oh, go sit the at that table no go sit at that table yeah, yeah the, 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 the only the real limiting factor in the ziggurat is gen con's height limit I'm not even sure that Origins has a height limit, but Gen Con has a 12 foot height limit for basically anything you want to do with your booth, yeah. which is really disappointing because you can't do two story anything, you know. Yeah. And like the the Ziggurat could clearly be a lot taller and have much taller banners. Um, yeah. Maybe if we like up our sponsorship level or something, we can like <laughs> get a taller or just Ziggurat. Just some bombs. I mean, I mean, we could do that. <laughs> well, that is the same yeah. thing, isn't it? I mean, really, aren't we talking the same thing? I mean, so well, you know, if yeah. we. If we attach the upper level to the ceiling, then we're not building up, it's hanging down. So maybe oh, maybe we just need to be like the lost work city. the rules. It could be the ziggurat in the lost city. It's the, it's the, it's the dungeon <laughs> yeah. underneath. Yeah. That's really funny. Oh, All right. So um, as they say in Star Wars, stay on target. So we have 16 minutes left. Uh, we're at 448, 567. And I think we started bucks. this. We've got this, people. 1,500. We got it. So yeah. Hmm. We started this talking about dice, which leads me to, to remind everybody on the, who's watching this or chatting on this. Um, the dice come in a, a seven dice set, like traditional polyhedrons, suitable for basically any game in the world except DCC, <laughs> as well as the larger 14 dice set for DCC that includes the three, the five, the seven, the 14, et cetera. So uh, even, if, even if you're a 5e player, pick up some dice because they work also just as well for you know 5e as well. Um, Guaranteed yeah, roll crits. Uh, no, we probably shouldn't say that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. And I think we started this like four topics ago talking about the stretch goals. So we had talked oh, about yeah. <laughs> that's, that was the 200K. 225 was the poster map. Um, 250 was full color painted in sheets. 
and like I love opening up this kind of option on books. Like they look so good, and like the end sheets for Crypt of the Devil, which turned out amazing. So it's just also really cool seeing what the artists can do with this kind of you know eleven by seventeen space, not obscured by logos or anything like that. We often get really cool art coming out of that. Um, 300 and 352 were Monsters and Magic of Dark Tower, first for 5e, then for DCC. Um, and actually, I, you know, just to say it briefly, this whole format of Monsters and Magic being like sort of a concept for um, a book, I actually really like. And Chris, I think this was your idea, but the idea, because that's how we sort of formatted, I guess it was Mike's idea, is, is how we formatted the Lankmar 5e material in this format. And then you had suggested doing it for Dark Tower, which I think is just a cool way, you know, to add crunchy bits set in the same general surrounding area or, you know, Janelleverse and expand them out a bit. Yeah, no, definitely. I, I, I think it's, it just, it helps round it out because when we're, when we're designing these things, we can just go crazy. You, 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 you invest yourself literally for months on a, a project this big, just as you're doing, even just conversions. It's like, I always keep a list of all these ideas and concepts I come with, come across in that, but then you never, you never have, it's like, ah, I can't really fit that in or you know, the dagger of desiccation, yeah. where am I going to put that? And it's like, and then all of a sudden an <laughs> opportunity comes up and you're like, oh, that'll be perfect. And it's like, let's go yeah. with that. So, um, so yeah, I mean, that, that part is, that, that part is good. It's always, you know, when you got creatives involved in these things, there's never, never a lack of ideas and concepts. Um, you know, then it's just, just pulling them off and doing them and then bringing them to, yeah. uh, bringing them to the hungry fans. <laughs> and you can never have you know exactly. too many monsters, right? Never. Let alone magic out of monsters. Oh never. yeah, gotta have more monsters. You gotta have more monsters. You know, when I wrote DCC, I remember <laughs> pledging never to publish a monster book, and pretty much everybody disagreed with me. So now I'm officially going to disagree with myself <laughs> and say there's nothing wrong with more monster books. Yeah. It's okay. I'm like, remember how TSR early on said they never publish adventure modules because you're just supposed to make your own. You know, like yeah. I agree with the concept, but not everybody's going to do that. So it's okay to do a no. monster book every now and then. And then monster books were always my favorite things to buy i still yeah. if i come across you know since i still run you know, i run pcc and i run first ed if i come across like a new ostrich monster book it goes home with me i come across anything that i can use i mean sometimes they're awful but sometimes they're really good <laughs> yeah. sometimes it's important to see the awful ones also so that you know what not yeah. to do <laughs> It's, yeah, we don't need six size variations on a whatever, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. That is so painfully true. Uh. Yes. All right, so we're at 12 minutes left, 448, 622. Hopefully somebody out there uh, sees fit to add on a few more dice or something along those lines. Actually, let's mention some of the other add-ons while we're talking yes, about this. Let's talk about that. Um, T-shirts. Come on, you guys need shirts, right? Everybody needs, everybody needs a shirt. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Let's see. We have the shirts. What else do we have? Campaign um, coins designed by Janelle. The coins, yes. yes. Those are really cool. Yeah, yeah, and they're actually cast in real metal and obviously not really made of platinum or silver, but they have a finish on them. Um, but those are really cool, the campaign coins. That company is actually based in Australia. Um, and it's... Uh, that sounds it's just cheap, really cool. Joe. <laughs> <laughs> to ship metal from Australia to the U.S.? That I know, like a great I know. Idea. <laughs> yeah, but it's cool that they... Hey, the, the main guy there, um, he's a huge Dark Tower fan, as are many of us, but he's actually been wanting to do some sort of Dark Tower themed coins forever. Like He has a company where he does different kinds of coins themed to different kinds of things. And so he was just really excited to hear about this um, and even more excited to actually get Janelle to participate in the, you know, everything. She actually did the write-ups behind the coins, which we posted in one of the updates along the way. She did the, uh, excuse me, the illustrations um, that will be engraved on the coins. Uh, they're pretty cool. They're very cool. Uh, somebody, somebody got a shirt thank you for getting a <laughs> one in one out it's okay just this one she can have two in or maybe one in none out we wear black um, because our souls are black 10 minutes to go <laughs> we're just over a thousand dollars we can do this we can do this yeah Man. we got the oh. dice we got them oh the miniatures we should talk about the miniatures oh yeah um, yes the other world has actually been doing again other world the main guy there is just a huge big fan of Dark Tower. He's been doing it for years. Um, he's had a license to produce Dark Tower miniatures for many years. And has, if you go to Otherworld, I think it's, it's a UK. I think it's otherworld.co.uk. But tons of cool options for Dark Tower miniatures. And so he prepped these three sets that are each $50 and have, I think it's between seven and nine figures per set. But each of these sets, um, especially designed for this Kickstarter at this sort of value price, and has, if you get all three, for example, you basically have all the miniatures you need for big chunks of the adventure, but they have just good assortments of uh, 
Mitra followers, set followers, and then denizens of the town of Mitra's Fest. Um, so check those out. There are 50 each. It's worth mentioning, uh, DCC folks, if you look at the followers of Mitra and you see white tower gnomes and you're like, well, DCC doesn't have gnomes. We do now. Oh, we've got rules for that. Um, the, the white tower gnomes are in the conversion. So get the miniatures. If you play with miniatures, you don't need to, to worry that they've been converted to halflings or dwarves or anything like that. They're white tower gnomes. And, and these are actual yes. metal minis too. So. Yeah, they're the that, real yeah. That won't poison you. So. Uh, right. Maybe. The old ones wouldn't either, or they yeah. thought we were chewing on them or something. I don't know. Yeah. Like that. So, <laughs> but they're gorgeous. Yeah, don't, they're gorgeous don't, sculpts. Don't eat them. So don't eat, yes, don't eat the don't eat the metal. It's generally yes. just a bad idea. Yeah. Yeah. And then also we have fantasy grounds as an option, as an add-on for conversion. Um, if you want to play electronically. And then actually we should also mention the OAR series is available at a discount if you pledge or you know, pick them up through the Kickstarter, 20% off. So if you don't have number one through six, now's a great time to get them. Uh, and they're all just, they're all great classic TSR adventures. Now expanded into Judges Guild stuff, uh, all really good stuff. And free shipping on those, correct? Free shipping but, uh, on yeah, those. To the continental U.S. <laughs> or yes. To the U.S., I should say, yeah. Yes, not to um, Australia. But yeah, so. free shipping if you buy $100 or more, which is basically three of them. Um, yeah. So pick any three and you get free shipping. Or, or, yeah. or, or just number six and one other one and and let me tell you <laughs> folks yes. I, I don't know what 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 shipping would cost for number six it's got to be 20 bucks or more i mean it's like that thing is so yeah. heavy plus we pack it so it's in such a large box when mike came it was like humongous box yes. because they wrap it in all the bubble wrap and everything because trust me we don't want that thing to get damaged and then come back because then nobody's happy but um but yeah no i mean it's like that is a great deal if you guys are missing any of the or books um ju jump on them because i mean those things are not cheap to ship and um yeah i mean either pick them up at the convention when we're you know at, at the at, you know when you're in person or or you know jump on this this uh this deal here come on we are we are just less than a thousand bucks we got seven <laughs> minutes ago we're now less we're now less than 900 bucks oh nice nice less, yeah, yours actually, is updating quicker than mine <laughs> we are just over 800 to go just right. over we've got the faster yeah. wi-fi we got this come on it's like a hundred dollars that we've got this come on guys you guys are amazing yes 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 it just jumped up like 200 bucks <laughs> i mean and the, the beautiful thing is right i mean I, right now we are we're, we're pushing to unlock a, a 5e adventure but Home you know it, it doesn't module. dcc players it doesn't matter there's going to be great concepts in it you're going to be able to use this anyway it just gives you more to play with I mean, there's all of this stuff has been fantastic from you know from the 5e side like I, like i said as, as the guy as the dcc conversion monkey in residence right now the stuff <laughs> that the 5e guys have been writing is fantastic and it so fits with everything that we do with our funky dice that we've got to help them you know cross cross this threshold they got us an adventure we got to get them one I like the collaborative spirit, Bob. I agree. They're both good systems. They're both good groups of players. Yeah, I mean, as long as you can sit around a table and have fun, I don't care what game you want to play. Right. Plus, plus, to be fair, I have written for both <laughs> systems for Goodman Games. So, you know, I... in, in in Secrets of the Sphinx, I actually added a table where you use a die five. That does exist, right? In DC. Yes. Five oh, yeah. Yes, it does so exist. I did put the little thing in there. Oh, you could use it, just re roll if you roll a six. But I actually put in there, roll a die five. Just yeah. so all, the, all the all the five E people are like, what? But, you know, hey, you know. Like, well, an impact impact has dice that go even, even beyond what we have yeah. as the normal dice chain, right? I mean, yeah. you know, they have a D9, for example. Or I, I know. I, that's like, it cracked me up. It's like only possible in the modern like computer era. Like I, I don't actually know this for a fact, but it, maybe Tom's on there. It feels like it must have been designed by like a computer program. I don't know how could some human think up something that shape. You know, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. It blows my mind. Yeah, and of course I love Kaplow's D60. I've been known to break that out for damage. <laughs> oh, I've got a blank D6, and I've got a and I've got the D60. I'm gonna say pick one. And they always pick the wrong one. Like you could have picked the D zero, oh, but you picked the D sixty. So here we go. Yes. yes. If it gets within range, he will add ores number one through five. Oh, we are within range. We're 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 right there. You got to add that. You got to add that. I can't wait. Yeah, that. just a couple more add-ons, folks. We're so close. Four hundred and seventy-five dollars away, and five minutes out. Yes. 
or books. Come on, add those and, or books on. I thought the minutes. or books are the college history text to the class that I was never offered but always wanted. All of the intro yes. material is so fantastic that the modules that, that I have in like beat up yeah, covers all torn up condition and then a uh, modern conversion form. They're beautiful. Uh, granted, they're they're they're, they're heavy. Um, <laughs> you start putting them all on one <laughs> on one shelf. But I know. Uh, yes, yes, we're gonna do this. Oh, we're gonna do up. this. I think my oh, refresh rate is catching up. On the but what's a better than owning Temple on the Having two copies of it. We're $74 I mean, dollars away. $74. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, yeah. that was a huge jump. Nice. We got this one more. We need one more person. One more person. So one more person. We're going to do this. Oh, this is awesome, guys. This was good. I, this I'll, be, really cool. I'll be honest with you. We're I, over. Is. Hey, Joseph, I update your graphics. <laughs> Thank you for the reminder. <laughs> Yeah. And, I always and forget. More. So yeah, you guys are awesome. We did it. So we we actually, I'll be honest, I woke up this morning. I wasn't so sure. I wasn't so sure that we were gonna hit 450. So I was hopeful. I was very, very hopeful, but I was yeah. still at the same time. I was like, uh. it's kind of amazing. You never really know. I, I will say yes, I, well, I dare you to add Castle Amber. Yes. <laughs> <Got> <laughs> Please. I've got content in that. I will definitely dare you to add Castle Amber. <laughs> so, oh, that well, that's awesome. amazing. Man, we have three so minutes much to interest spare. in this book. Jeez, we have three minutes. Okay, do? so we have three minutes for fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> we're gonna actually thank every single of the three thousand four hundred forty-six backers. We got a list printed out already. No, we're not doing that. So. <laughs> Because that would take us more than three minutes. Yes, we would have that to start that us... at the beginning of the show. Unless yeah. we had like the micro yeah. machines guy. <laughs> that's right awesome. 80s commercials were the best the commercial i watched nick jr with my kids nowadays i mean yeah i sound like such an old fogey but the commercials just aren't the same like i still love those tv commercials from the 80s they're not oh uh, yeah oh uh, yeah so yeah, it, it has you. been it has been a wild ride just being yes. involved in this project it has been it's been so exciting from from the moment mike mike Quasi asked me if I wanted to do this while leaving me a giant door open so I could say no. And I surprised him in saying yes. I mean, it's been, it has been thrilling to be a part of this. And it's great, not only, not only that, but the excitement the community has had for this project is really inspiring. Yes. It's really yeah. Nice. And, and I'm telling you, man, Bob, if you would have been at, at, at the booth of Origins, it was awesome. I mean, it was just awesome. So many people. Just, you know, and, and yet uh, ones that remember the original and ones that had no idea about Dark Tower and they're going to discover it for the very first time. And then yeah. the, the best, the ones that you cannot be is the ones where the parents are buying it because their 10, yes. 11 and 12 year old kids are now playing D&D &D and they want to subject them to the horrors that they were subjected to. <laughs> decades ago and uh that's our kind of people right there cut from cut from the cloth which is amazing so well and, and like i said i never got to play dark tower back in the day i think the only judges guild I ever played was beneath the storm giants castle so when i when i started you know converting this and started running the first play tests i was i was just absolutely blown away with how much there is in this adventure which is yeah. really a campaign it's yeah it's, it, oh, it's it, such a campaign. I mean, 80 pages, or what would you say, 72, 72. pages, I think, to count, compared yeah. to all the TSR modules were 16, you know, 12, yeah. 20 pages. Like, it's and, amazing how much content. And it oh. was so funny. I remember when I started converting it, uh, I kept telling Joe, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to be done, like, at the end of the month. I'll be done. I'll be finished with a piece of cake. And it kept dragging on and on and on. And I'm like, why is it taking me so long? And at first, I thought I was losing my touch or something. And just know there's just that much in it and and yeah. you know it's just so and it's so ripe for expansion and and all that that good that first edition goodness um that our fans just are going to eat up and it's just going to be brilliant so well and, and like i like i said under the heading this thing is how big uh, yeah. i just took trip to the devil lich and the first yeah. level of the dungeon has more rooms than the entirety of crypt of the devil lich, right yeah yeah yep. There is yeah. so much there as we're in 44 to, seconds to go. Exactly. Yeah. I have to shout out somebody in the chat. Uh, yes. A big thanks to Janelle. It's amazing what her brain cooked up in the seventies at a time yeah. when, I mean, there were lots of inspirational people creating cool stuff, but it's just amazing what she wrote back in that era. It um, really is. It's incredible. And it's just such an honor to be able to bring it to so many more fans and to bring it to literally new generations of gamers and that they're yep. going to get to experience it as well. We're down to 20 seconds. It's an honor just to be able yeah. to touch Let's this start the countdown. Yeah. Okay, so I got to count. 
uh, I'm going to call mine official. 10, okay. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ding, ding. <laughs> yes. Good job, 3,450 awesome. backers. That's a really <laughs> sweet round number. I like that number. That's that number nice doesn't bother number. me at all. <laughs> So, ah, so, oh, that was awesome. That's awesome. Yes. That Thank was you, so everybody. Cool. Next up, Catherine Zephyrisha. Yes. So. <laughs> Guess what I'm doing tomorrow. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, Actually, like, thanks, you right. guys. Thanks, Bob, for doing a fantastic job on the DCC side. Chris, fantastic job on the 5 e side. Mike, who's not here, terrific job as well. Um, Matt, who designed the graphics, Brad, who did some of the art in the midst of all this, everybody who's been involved. Elena, thank you for the great job on the Twitch broadcast. It's been awesome. Yes. You guys thank, have done thank you, job. all the backers. All yeah, it, it wouldn't have been possible awesome. without the yeah. great community that we've got. You guys are awesome. And it is, it is yeah. amazing. And yeah, I noted in the chat on Caverns of Thracia Miniatures. We'll start that conversation. <laughs> that, <laughs> they're big fans of all things, you know, Judges Guild, Janelle, Jackways, et cetera. So that I could see that being a possibility. Yes. But yeah, to... time to work in Caverns of Thracia, for sure. Yep, yep. We're going to celebrate this for about a half hour tonight and then go to bed. And then we're going to get right to Caverns of Thracia tomorrow. <laughs> So, so, so when you say celebrate, you mean drink heavily, right? And take a yeah, light. There might be more beverages involved. <laughs> it's entirely possible. So, well, but Chris, you got to wake up early tomorrow to watch Obi Wan. I mean, no, don't you, worry, you I'll gotta... be fine. I'm old. I get up early anyway. It's good. So, <laughs> okay, it's all fine. All right, cool. All right, cool. Well, great job, guys. Thanks for coming right. down with us. Thanks, right. everybody. Have this has been a blast. Thanks, Thank you all Bye. again.